Well, it's been a while since my raw, unedited voice was present on my YouTube channel, huh? Well, in that two year span, I've just so happened to pick up the Guilty Gear series, and it's been a favorite of mine ever since. Since I was looking to branch out my content, I figured it would be a good time to regurgitate Guilty Gear trivia into a mic, so here we are. I didn't create the original Iceberg image, though I am close friends with the person that did, so she helped me with everything from script writing, footage gathering, research, all that. So I'll be linking the original post in the description. So, bullshit introductions aside, layer one, let's go. This is a charge move used by Mei, which has gained meme status after the release of Guilty Gear Strive. The word itself is Japanese for... Die! But unfortunately for the English-speaking world, this word is forever cursed with the association with dolphin spam and annoying anime girls. Another viral meme that started was Jacko's inclusion in the first season expansion to Strive. Though the pose has been around since her debut game long ago, the popularity of Strive has been the catalyst for tons of fan art featuring various characters attempting to replicate Jacko's unusual posture. Long before the events of the first game, Soul was once a human scientist. He was transformed into a gear by his former colleague, and he has vowed revenge against him ever since. That makes him the first gear prototype, and he carries some of the guilt over the mass destruction caused by the gears that came after him. There are a lot of implications throughout the series that Soul is a self-insert slash alter ego type of character written by Daisuke. He even voiced Soul himself in the earlier games, although he revealed in a 1998 interview that he originally wanted established anime voice actor Koichi Yamadera to voice him. That wish was never fulfilled as other voice actors took the role in later games. Debuting in Guilty Gear XX, Bridget was born into a village as the second of two twins, and in this village there was a superstition that twins were said to bring bad luck, and to avoid said bad luck, his parents brought him up as a girl. Bridget happens to be one of the most popular characters in Japan, interestingly enough. Like Sol and Kai, Leo is a former member of the Holy Order and fought in the Crusades against the Gears. Being a war veteran, there's a pretty good chance he's got some drama from the experience. And if his theme song in Strive is anything to go by, yes he does. He has survivor's guilt. Because Daisuke is such a huge goddamn Westaboo, tons of names for moves and even characters reference Western music and musicians. Most notably, Soul Bad Guy's birth name being Frederick Bolsara, the same birth name as Freddie Mercury of Queen fame. Even the Bad Guy part of Soul Bad Guy is a reference to Mr. Bad Guy, one of Freddie Mercury's albums. Other examples include Slayer being named after the metal band and one of Kai's super moves being named after a Metallica Light album. Slayer's in-game animations are usually pretty nonchalant and relaxed, which implies he has nothing to worry about and isn't afraid of losing. Adding further credence to this idea, when he gets knocked out, instead of actually being knocked down, he just lays on his side like nothing's wrong. Being an extremely powerful vampire, Slayer probably only fights mortals for entertainment and holds back his true power. Gears mature much faster than humans do. In Dizzy's case, she reached adulthood in roughly one year, and she's three years old in her debut game. Which means Kai technically shagged a toddler. Sometime before the events of the first game, Dr. Baldhead was about to use an unproven procedure to save a young girl's life. Little did he know that this procedure is the key to learning straight-up resurrection. Conclave wanted to keep that knowledge a secret, so they hired Zato to sabotage the operation. Not knowing that the death of the patient was somebody else's fault, he went completely nuts and murdered countless innocents. After the first game though, he figured out that it was a conspiracy, so after that he went on a path of redemption, hiding his identity with a paper bag over his head and with a new name, Faust. Before the events of Guilty Gear Double X, Zato's shadow, Eddie, decided to turn on his host and take complete control of his body. Zato attempted to break free of him, but he perished in the process, leaving Eddie to control his corpse. This is why the game calls him Eddie and not Zato. Of course, in Exard, he is revived, but without his emotions. Biken is a DLC guest character for the 2019 reboot of Samurai Showdown. I would have had more to say about it if I actually played the game, but I didn't, so whatever. 
Slayer has a wife named Sharon who is both immortal and invincible, which lends itself to some really odd humor about him being a vampire with a wife that can never lose all her blood. In Slayer's battle intro in Exerd, you can see him bite into his wife's neck and she deflates and flies away like a balloon, which can really freak out first time players that lack the context. In X and Core Plus R, like all the other characters, Order Soul has an instant kill, but the input isn't the same as all the others. It requires a very elaborate combo with very precise timing, which makes it completely useless. It's so fucking bad that neither of us could pull it off successfully, so here's some stolen footage. While Mei has always had the appearance of a child, there have been several hints and nods to Mei being much older than she appears to be, such as when she secretly tells Chip her real age in Exarg. In the Neo New York stage in Guilty Gear Exard, a character can be found that heavily resembles Strive's Gold Lewis Dickinson. However, it was stated in the seventh volume of the developer's backyard that this is actually his older brother, a sheriff. In one of the shots in Strive's story mode ending, you can find Testament just chilling there in the background. Making this more interesting is the fact that he hasn't been seen since Double X and therefore did not have a model in Exard like most other characters shown in the ending shots. Zappa's character design takes very heavy cues from Vanilla Ice of JoJo Part 3 fame. Never mind the fact that one of the ghosts possessing him closely resembles a stand, and taking into account the erratic poses Zappa does in his victory animations. According to the Guilty Gear Exard official website, Potemkin likes drawing, and can even be seen drawing in the Guilty Gear Extra manga, which we will discuss later. Also stated on the Exerd website is that he dislikes pencils that snap under 4 tons of weight. In the Guilty Gear universe, a cataclysmic event called the Dawn of Revival occurred in 1999 that caused all technology to malfunction and cease operations, with several large-scale natural disasters throughout the world following after. This is believed to be in reference to the Y2K bug, and being that the first game was released during a time where Y2K paranoia was at an all-time high, it isn't unreasonable to assume that Guilty Gear is an alternate universe where the bug did have cataclysmic ramifications as speculated back in the day. The South Korean release of Guilty Gear Double X Reload, a new soundtrack was created by then famous Korean metal band Next as a way to market the game. This seemed to at least be moderately successful as the Korean soundtrack has garnered fans all over the world and Stripe itself even has a Korean dub. If you're wondering what the soundtrack is like compared to the rest of the series, you're listening to it right now. A four-player Nintendo DS spin-off game featuring most of the Accent Core Plus R roster, but the gameplay changed to that of a platform fighter. It wasn't even developed by Arxis directly. While it isn't exactly a great game, it's probably the closest we'll ever get to having sold bad guy in Smash Bros. A sort of secret version of Dragon Install that Soul can do in Accent Core in later revisions. It's probably the worst overdrive in all of Guilty Gear. It puts you in Dragon Stall state until the end of the round. However, it costs a full meter and drains your health faster than you can deal damage. Imagine if Naguriyuki's Blood Rage drained your health for the entire round. That's what you're dealing with here. Not worth it at all. To celebrate the then upcoming release of Guilty Gear Strive, Arxis released a couple videos under the title of Oshiete Setsume-chan, the rough English translation being Teach Me Explanation-chan. The Setsume part is a pun on Mei's name, and the videos in question feature a chibi version of her explaining the lore of the Guilty Gear series in an easy to understand way. The videos also feature a robotic version of Mei, now called Robo Mei, which helps her explain the lore. This series was later localized as Explamations with Mei. There was indeed a port of Guilty Gear X to the Game Boy Advance. As you might guess, the port is laughably bad, with incredibly compressed graphics, exploitable and hilariously terrible AI, and music that sounds more like Game Boy music than Game Boy Advance music. The most interesting thing about this port is that it even exists at all. For Guilty Gear X's Western release, the bright lads over at Arxis decided to give the game's opening cinematic a dub. However, like many dubs done on a tight budget, it wasn't of the best quality and gave us many hilarious lines such as... Oh no! I'm falling! A character exclusive to the Japan-only spin-off series for the Wonder Swan Color called Guilty Gear Petite. 
Her life was saved by Dr. Baldhead, and that led her to study medicine herself. Well, Faust does appear in Petite too. she seems to be the replacement for him in the first one. Why this character was never seen in any other game is beyond me. It is often speculated that Nagoriyuki is, or is at least related to Yasuke, a real-life African-born samurai that served under Oda Nobunaga. He even says in one of his voice lines that he's a retainer of Kazusanosuke, which is an alias used by Nobunaga. Arc System Works, while entirely responsible for the Guilty Gear franchise, was only a contract developer for Sammy Corporation in their early years. Due to a corporate merger between Sega and Sammy and a change in management, Arxis did not have the rights to certain Guilty Gear characters for quite some time, and this fact is often pointed to as the reason why BlazBlue exists at all. Arxis did, however, reacquire the rights to these characters in 2011. Guilty Gear and BlazBlue have referenced each other several times with their color palettes throughout the series, such as Sol and Kai having palettes for Ragna and Jin and vice versa, Izanami having Jacko's color scheme, Nine having Eno's, and a whole lot more. In the UI folder of Guilty Gear Strive, an image of a title that reads Guilty Gear Exard 3 can be found, implying that Strive was at one point supposed to be the third revision of Guilty Gear Exard. A character who, according to Daisuke, is supposed to be the mascot of Guilty Gear despite only appearing in a handful of games with very minor roles, such as the online lobbies in Exard. It is implied that Kai traded his left eye with Sins to give Kai the ability to perform a dragon install without being a full-on gear like Soul. Something that has happened presumably before Guilty Gear 2 Overture. Strive would later confirm this as Eno and Asuka allude to the fact that his dragon install ability comes from having blood from the scales of Juno, something that all descendants of Justice are supposed to have. The real Justice was killed long before the events of Guilty Gear XX. The explanation for her presence in the roster is that she is a mere clone created by the Post-War Administration Bureau, and is nowhere near as strong as the original. In older Guilty Gear games, blood is frequently shed by certain attacks, and they stopped doing that later in the series for whatever reason. Not much else to it. In Accent Core, Eno has a victory animation where she takes her top off while turning to face the background. There was a single frame where a nipple is visible, and this alone is what got the game an M rating. In Guilty Gear 2 Overture, Dizzy is always referred to as the Maiden of the Grove. In game, this is just a code name used by Sol and Kai while they're in Illyria, but the real reason is that the game was released in 2007, and they did not have the rights to characters from Guilty Gear X and Double X as previously stated. Guilty Gear Accent Core has a port on the Wii, and you can use motion controls for some moves. Really ridiculous on paper, and a little known novelty. Secret boss versions of Soul and Kai that only appeared in Guilty Gear Isaka. These versions use much of the same moveset as their EX counterparts, but are much stronger with a permanent Dragon Install like effect. Guilty Gear in LA and New York are vocal albums based off of Guilty Gear XX that were released in 2004. This was sort of an attempt to go full circle with Guilty Gear's rock and metal roots, as the vocals for the songs were done entirely by American rock and roll vocalists. The reception by fans to many of these songs have been mixed, some saying that it sounds incredibly well done and deserving of the Guilty Gear name, and others believing the lyrics are far too cheesy and silly and don't mesh well. It also burst several in-jokes within the community, such as... Line sung in the vocal version of Kai's theme, Holy Orders. In 
in double X in later revisions. If you choose Axel or Milia and go on the London stage, there's a small chance the guy painting a picture in the background will be painting a picture of an alien. There's actually an achievement for getting it to appear on the Steam version of X and Core Plus R. To really put into perspective how rare this is, only 4% of Steam players have this achievement, and I could not find any footage of this painting anywhere on YouTube no matter how hard I search. You probably saw it here first, folks. A Nintendo DSiWare spin-off platformer featuring Shimaki as the main character. Besides him, it has absolutely nothing to do with Guilty Gear. Guilty Gear Club is an iMode website featuring a port of missing link to mobile phones of the day. For those that don't know what iMode is, it's a Japan-exclusive service for specific mobile devices from the mid-2000s that provides anything from email to forecast to games, essentially smartphone features before actual smartphones were a thing. An Axel stage in the first Guilty Gear. There are several people in the background that closely resemble Terry, Andy, Joe, Mai, and Geese of Fatal Fury fame. Speaking of Axel and Fatal Fury... Alright, this one's primarily a joke, but this can actually be a pretty credible fan theory. Hear me out. Axel is a time traveler from an alternate universe, right? And in his original time, he was called by a different name, which according to Eno in Strive's ending, is William, which can be shortened to Billy. Both are British, fight with similar chainful weapons, wear much of the same clothes, and even have similar play styles. <laughs> this is so fucking stupid. The Zakodan, or Lackey Gang in Japanese, are a group of fighters appearing only in the console versions of Guilty Gear Isaka. Not much is actually known about them or why they even exist. Guilty Gear Extra is a manga that takes place between the events of the original Guilty Gear and Guilty Gear X. It stars two new characters, Tyr and Mizuha. Characters from the main series do appear, but only in very minor roles or cameos. Daisuke had direct involvement in writing this manga, and it doesn't seem to contradict the games from what I've read, so as far as I know, it can be considered canon too. Obviously a joke entry in the same style as many other icebergs. While the very first Guilty Gear was ported to PC and is available on Steam, it does not have any online support. Can you even imagine the chaos that would ensue from having that horribly balanced game being playable online? And speaking of online multiplayer... <laughs> no, no it doesn't. While GGPO Netcode was backported to the PC version of Accent Core Plus R, Arxis did not give Exard Rev 2 the same treatment, much to the dismay of fans everywhere. I can only hope that this video becomes dated by Arxis giving out that update, but I don't think that's in their best interest with the Strive hype train still in full swing as of writing. Alright, this one has to be my absolute favorite piece of trivia, and it has so much in-joke potential, but it isn't very well known, hence why I saved it for last. In 1999, controversies around video games causing violence were at an all-time high. Then-President Bill Clinton himself addressed how video games could allegedly cause violence, and in his example of this, he used an ad in a PlayStation magazine that proudly proclaimed you can kill your friends guilt-free. That ad was for none other than the original Guilty Gear. Obviously, Guilty Gear itself didn't go on to hurt anybody in any major way. Except for maybe the Headaches of Justice fight will give you, let's be real. But the fact that this was the game used to talk about video game violence is a little crazy, considering Guilty Gear was far from a hot topic in the West at the time. Part of me wishes that something actually came of the exposure Bill Clinton could have brought to the game. Well, that's all folks. I hope you learned something. And don't worry, the music content isn't going away forever. I'm just taking a break while I explore other ideas. But hey, the only thing that's for certain on this channel is nothing's for certain. Until next time everybody, take care.